All right. Uh, good, good evening, class. My name is Joey Lamont, and today I'm going to be talking to you about judo. Uh, judo means the gentle way. It's the direct translation in Japan. And the basic principle, the underlying uh, idea of judo is minimum effort, maximum efficiency. Now, I could talk to you for hours on judo, um, so I'm going to keep it fairly brief today and uh, not talk your ears off. So, brief history of judo. It was founded by a guy named Jigoro, Jigoro Kano in 1882. Uh, he came from a fairly affluent family in Japan, uh, studied various types of martial arts, and uh, fell in love with a uh, particularly the throwing portion of judo. Um, there's also, uh, just a little caveat, there's also a lot of uh, Japanese terminology. Uh, sometimes I'll use them and I'll explain them, uh, but for the most part I'm going to forego them. Uh, this is an English-speaking class, so there's no point to it. Um, so how you win in a judo match is get an ippon, which is a, that Japanese word again. Um, that means uh, one point, big point. Uh, that and you achieve that by pinning someone for 25 seconds or getting them a, some type of joint lock or choke uh, making them tap out uh, or if your opponent forfeits or you win by default just how you would any other sport um, you can also uh, win by a wazari which means half point and a yuko uh, wazari is for maybe I throw the guy and we'll explain what it is to throw someone later uh, but maybe I throw a guy and he doesn't land flat on his back. That's how I land a, a win in judo. He has to land uh, pretty much flat on his back, or both shoulder blades have to touch the ground after the throw. So they'd give me a half point, except uh, I can get 100 half points and still not win, win the match, whereas the ipon is only one point. Um, and then a yuko is really just like an aggression point, and we'll talk about that later. So the benefits of judo, uh, read this quote first, it's not about being better than someone else, it's about being better than you were the day before. Uh, in judo it's very true, you, it takes a lot of time and years to get good at judo. Um, so you're going to experience fitness benefits because it's a tough sport, it builds mental toughness. Uh, you're going to get fatigued, you're going to get beaten, you're going to fall a lot, you're going to feel like you've been in a car accident, <laughs> and uh, you're going to get in good shape because of it, and because it's tough. Uh, the psychomotor, it's good for, it teaches you, your body to move as one, uh, your mind, hence mind-body unison. Uh, the cognitive, uh, it's knowing the importance of falling and off-balancing. Uh, this basically means what I would tell all my students is, you may never have to use judo, you may, you may never have to use martial arts in general in your life to defend yourself, but I guarantee you, you will fall. And it's what you do when you fall, uh, how, how you're judged in judo and how you're judged in, in real life too. Um, and then off balance, in judo it's, it's all about uh, like I said, minimum effort, maximum efficiency. So if I can off-balance my opponent, uh, and there's eight points of off-balance we'll talk about later, then I'll be able to throw them, and that's what students will need to learn. They'll need to know the eight points of off-balance and how to properly uh, off-balance somebody. And then in the effective domain, um, they're going to learn respect, courage, commitment, tradition, and politeness. Um, there's, judo is very much tied in with Japanese culture and uh, tr uh, traditional courtesies such as bowing, um, answering yes, no, or yes, sensei, no, sensei. And that, that has a built-in humility and uh, built-in respect factor. Uh, for courage, it takes courage to get in there and to let somebody throw you or try to throw someone else. It, that, that's hard, and I've seen, a, I've seen people just blossom, turn into... Uh, completely different individuals uh, through martial arts, and in this case, particularly judo. So the steps of learning. Uh, so the 
learning progression of judo. Okay, uh, it's not in the book, but uh, I've been teaching it for many years, and I've uh, been teaching martial arts for many years. Um, the first thing you have to do is know how to fall, and the reason for that is when you get thrown, uh, regardless of what kind of throw it is, you need to know how to fall without breaking an arm or leg or clavicle or um, you know so you're instead of maybe falling flat on your back and knocking the wind out of you you're gonna put a majority of the force uh, channeling it to your arm uh, meaning and at the end of the day if I break my arm well what's better a broken head broken back or broken arm um, and then the second part is uh, being thrown uh, you have to know how to be thrown before you can start throwing people because it, you're gonna it's gonna make you want to control because if you don't know what it's like to get thrown hard then you're just gonna throw other people hard without really caring <laughs> uh, so it's a, it's a good humility builder um, and then on there you'll see in the PowerPoint it says good uki uh, uki is the receiver of the throw the the person being thrown and you're, when you're getting thrown, you don't fight the move uh, at, when you're learning. In competition, it's completely different. Uh, but when you're learning and working with somebody, you let them throw you. You be a good partner with them. Uh, and then lastly, the throw, and that's going to have four parts. One is the grip. There's a lot of different places you can grip in judo. You can grab the lapel, uh, the underneath the elbow, um, different parts of the uniform, which is called the gi. And then the three parts of any throw our break balance, setup, and then the application of the throw. And those three things are, they make up every throw, whether it's a trip or a throw. And I know I keep saying these, and we will define them here in just a little bit. All right, so I have a video of myself doing a shoulder roll, which is the first part of the lesson plan. So it's a video, but I'm going to play it frame by frame because my daughter was crying in the background. So as you see here, I'm going to go in. I'm going to lower my body. Okay. Now what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be tucking my chin in and my right arm is going to swing through. Okay. Very important that I keep my chin tucked so I don't hit my, my head. Okay, throughout the entire throw, I'm going to keep, or the, the entire roll, I'm going to keep my uh, chin tucked. And then I'll come back up. Okay. The next skill we'll be talking about is a backfall. Okay, so this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. What's better to have a, a broken arm or broken back? Now, I know for the purpose of this uh, lesson, we would be... I would be teaching uh, ninth graders or anyone in the high school age and so saying break arm that may sound violent but it's it's really not I'm teaching them a basic life skill that everyone should have knowing how to fall is one of the best skills you can have in life because like I said I guarantee you will fall at one point in your life all right so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start off with my arms crossed keeping my chin tucked like I said before so this way when I do fall my head isn't bouncing off the concrete or the floor or whatever it may be and then my arms are going to slap the floor now it should be said we would be practicing judo on mats wrestling mats, tatami mats uh, protective flooring not carpet um, but this is these are the resources I had available to me alright and then the last uh, skill is a side fall. All right, and for a side fall, so the back fall, you're falling on your back. A side fall, you're going to start in similar position, squatted, arms crossed. I'm going to swing uh, the leg, the side leg that I'll be falling on. It's going to swing out. I'm going to look toward the direction, keeping my chin tucked. And once again, slapping the ground. And the key with any falling is to relax. I know that sounds uh, weird, but when you fall, you need to relax. Uh, and you need to breathe out. So the lead-up games that we're going to be talking about, 
from the book, uh, judo, since it's a challenge topic, it's kind of hard because the the lead up, the introductory activities, the lead-up games uh, are different than what they are in the book. But these are ones that I saw that would be helpful for judo. So you have the formation, formation rhythmic running, uh, which can be found on page 308 of our text, and the pentabridge hustle, hustle, which can be found on page 305. The other two, so those you can look up in the text the other two need some uh, more explanation so we have sumo and we got our sumo wrestlers over here uh, basically you uh, get on the mat create a circle whether it's with belts uh, shirts or just chalk whatever however you can do it and the whole goal of sumo is to push the opponent out of that circle or pull them out of the circle um, and that, that's the whole goal, but students have a blast with it, and it's a good way to teach judo fundamentals. And then a roll contest. So this involves doing that shoulder roll I demonstrated earlier, but rolling over things, over people, uh, grabbing things that were on the ground while you're rolling. Um, you can do relay races with the rolls. Uh, you do multiple consecutive rolls. Uh, kids get dizzy, and they have a blast with that one as well. All right, so rules in judo. I could bore you guys and go over every single rule there is in judo, just like any other sport. There's hundreds of rules. Um, but as you see in the picture, this is not okay. You can't stick your finger in somebody's mouth. <laughs> um, so it's basic sportsmanlike conduct. You can't strike. You can't punch. Even though it's a martial art, it's a throwing art. You're, you're doing a shoulder throw, a uh, hip toss, a... Uh, a sweep and I know once again these terms if this was a regular class I'd be able to demonstrate which what each one is and you guys would have a better idea of that um, and then follow the courtesies so when you go step up to the mat you have to bow uh, before you start you bow and um, which kind of goes along with uh, sportsmanlike conduct and then we have the Ipon Wazari and Yuko which we had already uh, discussed earlier um, and then different belts, different levels of experience have different rules. Uh, for uh, for example, a very popular move now because of MMA is the armbar. Well, if you're a basic beginner, you are not allowed to do an armbar. You can really only just uh, attempt to throw your opponent um, and some basic chokes, but armbars aren't allowed. But once you're black belt, uh, you're able to do those techniques. And, of course, all the people in the Olympics or World Championships, they're all competing with black belt rules. So how does this uh, integrate with our faith? Um, like I said earlier, judo is a tough sport, and it, it really does forge an iron will. Uh, you're getting thrown all the time. You're literally imposing your will on someone else or preventing someone from doing it to you. Uh, and that gives you discipline, and it gives you uh, the courage to to have faith and, and to believe what you believe and be proud of it. Um, the other thing is after, so you're, you're in this battle, you're wrestling with this guy. It's a hard match or a girl. And at the end of it, you're going to give him a hug. It was a good match and teaches, teaches you good, uh, good sportsmanship, uh, which ties directly into religion and treating others how you would like to be treated. And lastly, because it is such a physical sport, if you uh, if you have respect in the body, you're gonna have respect in your creator. Uh, if you treat your body well, you know actions speak louder than words. So you can say you're religious, you can say your belief in God all day, all you want, but how you treat others and how you treat yourself uh, is a direct reflection of your true faith. So I know I'm running a little long here. Uh, strategies involve. Uh, right if i'm used to if people are used to being seeing a throw on the right side i'll practice it on my left and use a left-sided throw um there's and then other strategies would include uh throws for tall guys and uh throw there's throws that are better for uh a smurfs short guys right here um and so those are the when you're developing a game plan you're going to want to practice the throws that are better for your body size body shape and lastly, here are the resources. Uh, feel free to pause the video and uh, go to those. They're a great resource to utilize for the world of judo. And thanks for putting up with me.